Hey everyone, this is Gleb. Recently I've seen this post on LinkedIn where a user is showing their API tests. In the next couple of videos I want to show how I would write the same tests. Luckily the user has provided the full repo with the tests. I forked it and I just want to show my way of writing the same tests because I think this test could be written in a shorter, more elegant way using Cypress and various plugins. The first thing we want to do when we refactor the test is to make sure they are passing. So one of the things that I will change in this code, I will make sure that it reruns the test when the file is changed and saved. So I'm going to remove this. I will make a new branch, so demo one, and I'm going to open Cypress. I will use Electron and let's start with the first spec file registration. It has a couple of tests as you can see. Um, happy path registers a user, confirms the different parameters, use a Cypress plugin API to show um, requests and response. So really nice uh, test. Let's see how it's written. It's one reg right here. Grabbing the server URL uh, and let's just concentrate on the first test. I'm going to move it to the right and you can see the test is passing. So we're making a request to register a new client. All it does, it just uses Sci API, which is really Sci request, the URL and then the user and just returns whatever it yields. And what do we do next? Well, we are checking the response and we're checking multiple fields like status code, right? Let's move the status code right here. I don't want to log it, but then we're checking the body of the response, the user property, and it has to have ID, the right email, where is this email coming from? I will form it right here. The username is right there, right? By the way, it's shared by all tests, which I don't recommend, and it's passing. So whenever you want to check multiple properties in the same object, I suggest that you use plugin called SciSpark. It's available right here. You can see how to use it. I have lots of blog posts and examples. And instead of checking each property, you can just describe all the properties of an object that you expect and you don't have to have actual values you can use predicate functions okay let's add it to this project and SizePack has a little bit of a problem with the latest webpack 5 so i'm going to install version of SizePack that works in this project here's how we will use it we'll import spark from SizePack. okay and now let me comment out uh, what we had before, we can say should, and you know that should expects a callback or a chai assertion, but we can say spark and this returns a function. And now we can just provide the same information. So the status property should be 201. Then inside the response body, there should be an object user and we're describing every property of a user that we expect it to have. So we don't know the value of ID, but we know it's a number. We know precise value of email, so we can simplify and username and the token should be a string. So let's comment this out for now. So the test was passing. Let's run it again and notice how SizePack provides the UI. It forms a big set of assertions and notice we're validating this nested object in a single assertion and it says status to one. Uh, then there is a body object and then the user and it indents the nested property. So you have your user, ID, email and it shows the values or it shows the value and the predicate. So it's really nice uh, way of seeing the assertion right there in a single statement. So we can remove this. We can update the rest of the tests just doing the same thing, right? Should Spark and then an object status 422. Now we're testing invalid taste, uh, cases. So I'm gonna just run those tests. Perfect. Again, compare Spark assertion versus individual. What is 422? You have no idea. What is this uh, array? You have no idea. But here it's pretty clear. 
body errors email, right? So you see body, body.errors, email property should be an array. Okay, we can uh, change every test. My GitHub Copilot does a nice job inferring from the original code what I want to test. Should Spark just get it started and it will confirm. You just have to watch out sometimes. So the email, the username is not there. Okay, uh, existing email. Now let me first change this assertion. Okay. We are looking at the response and the status. Okay, now this can be written implicitly using should and when the build chai assertion should have property, status, and provide a value. And 99% of Cypress and chai assertions, they don't change the current subject. So wherever response was there, it will continue to the next step. But it can be written as a one liner. Let's see if this passes. Mm -hmm, perfect. And the next one. We can say Spark, and then we are looking just at the errors. So we'll say errors. Email has been already taken, so we can remove this. Uh, okay, so something went wrong. No worries. Here's how easy it is to debug it, right? Just click on the either the failing assertion or the Cy request, which is Cy API, and you can see the body user. Okay, well, it seems like there are no errors. Oh, wait, uh, I removed the actual uh, important stuff. So right here, we're just checking the first user is created. So the status still one. And then inside say then, this is where we get an error because we're trying to register the user with the same name. So we can say should spark and then this is a second call to the API. Okay, perfect. Uh, one other additional simplification I'll do. Notice how here we're getting a random number between um, 100,000 and uh, a million. The same thing could be done using built-in lodash method, random between 100,000 and 999,999. Okay, and you know we can update the last test using the same approach. There is one other thing that I like doing. Notice right here, we are grabbing the API server URL from the Cypress environment. In this case, it comes from cypress.json. This is the API endpoint. If that setting is not there, let's say we made a mistake and misspelled it, right? You can get cryptic errors that are hard to understand. Okay. So what I like doing is I like using assertions for the settings just to make sure that it's a string and is not empty, is not null and so on. If this doesn't pass, you get actual very useful error message. And you know, oh, my API server in Cypress env is wrong. Maybe I didn't set it. Maybe I misspelled it. So I like validating it. Uh, it doesn't affect the tests running if everything is okay. But if it's missing, you get a nice error message and know exactly what went wrong. All right. So Cyp API from Cypress plugin API command, right? That we are using to make API calls that creates nice UI right here. And the Cy Spock plugins are covered in my course on Cypress plugins, just like it covers lots of other plugins that you might find useful. In the future videos, I will refactor more tests to show how I would write them so that they're more robust and easier to write and understand.